In this episode, I wanted to talk about configuring route DACs for EIGRP, so either setting a default route DAC or setting a specific route DAC using a route map. So I've used this example before in my other EIGRP videos, so check those out if you're interested. It's just a simple network with a serial over here, gigabit over here, fast ethernet down here, and I have the metrics of the bandwidth and the delay down here with an artificially increased metric for this serial. So uh, each of these routers has a loopback address and I'm going to create some additional loopbacks on R4 that I'm going to apply some route tags on. So a route tag is just a number. However, we also have the route tag uh, dot decimal notation, which is basically the same format as an IP address. So by doing that, we can actually match it based on a wildcard mask, which will allow us to match something called something like an even or e uneven, uneven or even route tags or stuff like that. We can get very granular. So in addition to setting specific route tags for uh, using route maps, we can also set a default route tag on all routes originated by the router. However, we will have to use EIGRP name mode. So more on that later. So let's get into the configuration of these routes. So if I show IP route EIGRP right now, I can see that all of these routes go over router 2. So this is because the metric is lower over the fast ethernet than a serial per plus a gigabit. So if I ping this from sourcing loopback zero, I can see that I have full connectivity. If I show IP interface brief on R4, I can see that I have these four created loopbacks over here, slash 32 addresses. However, they are not advertised in EIGRP right now. So that's what I'm gonna do first. But before I do that, let me specify Oh, oh wait, I'm going to do that later. So, never mind that. So, if we look at the configuration here, we have uh, an access list that matches on loopback 1. So, I'm just permitting that 32 mask um, access list that matches on loopback 2. I have a prefix list that matches on loopback 3. And I'm going to match loopback 4 using this match interface statement. So, that's not really required. You can match them all using an access list or a prefix list. I just wanted to show you that the, there's multiple methods of using this or matching this. You could in fact get very granular when you use a route map. So you just create I just created a route map called loopbacks. I say match IP address loopback one and I set this tag. So this tag does not have to match this address. This is just a uh, number, in this case a number that resembles an IP address. So I have a separate uh, statement over here permit twin that matches on loopback two and sets this tag. I have the permit 30 that matches on loopback 3 and sets this back and this one matches on this interface and sets that specific tag. So you've probably noticed that these tags are quite similar, they only differ in this third octet. And then you just redistribute connected with the route map loopback. So let me paste this in on R4. If my router does not crash, there we go. And if I go on R1 and show IP route EIGP. I can see that I have this four, these four routes over here and they are external routes which means they have been redistributed. If I show IP route for that one, I can see that this route tag is now some random value. This is because I have not enabled route tag notation of dotted decimal. So let's fix that. If I say route tag notation and then we can have dotted decimal. So if I do that on all routers And I go back to R1 and I show IP route right now. Now it gives me the correct route tag. And for two, it gives me that route tag and that route tag and that route tag. So if I go just the other loop back of R4, I can see that this does not have a route tag down here because we do not set a default route tag. So I've set tags to all of these routes, all of these loopbacks, but it's not really doing anything right now. The way we can actually use this is by going on R1, for instance, and create a route tag list. So if you're familiar with BGP, this might seem similar to using a community list or an ASPAD access list or something like that. We, I'm just calling, calling it loopbacks and I'm permitting on this actual route tag address. So you notice that I'm just using zeros over here and this is a wildcard mask that has 254 in here, which means uh, that we are matching on only on even the third arc that so that will be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So we're not matching on 1 and 3. 
So with this policy, this route tag list, I'm basically saying I only want to apply a specific policy to route tags that have a even third architect. So if I show IP EIGRP topology for uh, 4001/32, for instance, I can see that the bandwidth, the minimum bandwidth over uh, over R2 is 100k, and we have this delay. Over the serial, we have a minimum bandwidth of 50k, and we have this delay. So let's say I wanted to go and have actually for the HP, I wanted to have an equal cost load balancing for the loopback of uh, that ends in two, and I wanted to have equal cost load balance for this loopback four, and not for three and one. I can do that based on this route tag list. So I'm just creating a route map called loopbacks permit ten. I'm matching this route tag list and I'm setting a specific metric. And this metric, you may have noticed, is the same one that is used by the serial interface, meaning that these were, this metric will change for uh, loopback2 and loopback4 coming from router2, because that's where I am applying this route map using a distribute list. Also notice that I'm having an empty permit statement over here, this is required, otherwise we will filter everything that is not matched specifically by this route tag list. So that's not something I want to do. And with the show tag list, we can basically verify uh, if our route tag list exists. So let's paste this in. If I show route tag list, I can see that I have this tag list created. This is basically the same as saying show IP uh, prefix list. And if I show IP route EIGRP, we can see that our neighbor has, with R2 has resynced because I applied the policy on the fast Ethernet interface. So if I show IP route EIGRP, right now for loopback2, I can see that this is being load balanced over R2 and R3, and the same goes for R4. So this is only based on the actual route tag that we are increasing this metric for. So if I show IP EIGRP topology for 4002-32, we can see that R3 in this case is listed first, so we have this bandwidth and delay, same as before. However, we have this bandwidth and delay of that is identical to R3 on this prefix coming from R2. And we have the administrative tag also down here. So that's how we match on a route tag list, in this case an even route tag list, which, uh, as you can imagine, is a very powerful tool. We can basically match on whatever you want and apply certain types of policies with these route maps. So, in addition to that, if I go to router EHP1, if I do EHP uh, default route tag, it's not available for me in this normal EHRP configuration mode. What I need in desk, that case is router EHP and then name mode, add a family IP4 autonomous system 2, for instance, and I say EHRP default route tag. So here I can set a default route tag, something like 101, whatever it might be, and then this will be applied to all routes originated by this router, which can be a very handy tool. So I know exactly if I look at a route, where this route originated, who originated it. And then I can apply certain types of policies without going through each and every prefix, wondering where it came from, and having a lot of access list or distribute list. I can just match it with a single route tag list. So that's a very powerful tool that we have available for us in the EIGRP name mode. So that's basically it for route tags. It's not that hard to configure, but remember that we have the both the notation that has changed. So, so that's basically the same as using the IPBGP community new format. So we need to change that. The default is just a normal route tag notation. I hope this has been informative. Thank you.